Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. The Narrative Lectionary readings for May 5th, uh, where we focus on faith, hope, and love, you might expect is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Um, we often call that the love chapter, and uh, many are familiar with that. Um, it's often uh, been um, read or sung in weddings. Um, but uh, Ralph ended us very well last week in moving us to this recognition that the divisions around us are supposed to be broken down in uh, this uh, uh, divine love of Jesus and that's the context for uh, 1 Corinthians 13. So uh, I would uh, just open us today by encouraging uh, preachers to read um, particularly uh, 1 Corinthians 12 so that you understand these divisions, uh, these uh, fights around uh, which gift is a better gift and to recognize that what they are being offered is a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is defined in this love. And so that love is not uh, an abstract idea, but it is an expansion of, or shall I say, it's um, since we've been talking about this the last few weeks, it's the upside downness of the divisions that have been enacted in this very diverse community, which looks a whole lot like the diversities that we have, whether we define ourselves uh, by um, our denominations or what it is that is our ministry in our particular community or who our pastor is and whether or not they have the most hits on you know, their um, social media. No, what people are supposed to see is an extraordinary love. And then this becomes a powerful word, a love that is patient, that is kind. It's not like that saccharine love that sometimes we pretend it to be. It's much bigger than that. Yeah, I uh, I will. I'll just echo uh, your suggestion there, Joy. I think you're exactly right to set this in its literary and theological setting. I think is really important because otherwise, people do hear that kind of saccharine, you know. Well, this is this isn't a wedding. Why are you, you know? Why are you talking about this chapter, right? So, so to set it, even to just read a few verses at the end of uh, of chapter twelve, right? Now, you are the body of Christ, individually members of it. Are all prophets, are all teachers, do all possess the gifts of healing, uh, but strive uh, for the greater gifts. And I will show you a still more excellent way. I, I mean, I think that's a good intro into the chapter because I think then it it uh, tells people uh, or, or demonstrates to people that this chapter is probably more relevant than they realize. I mean, obviously it can also be used for weddings. It can be used for marriages. It can, you know, it can be used to talk about how we love one another, about love as action, <laughs> love as a verb, uh, not, not just kind of a warm, fuzzy, romantic feeling, right? Or, it's just so much bigger than that. So obviously it can have relevance for marriages as well, but it is bigger than that. And it's talking about unity and love within the community, uh, within, the, within the faith community. And that's so important. You listed various kinds of divisions I think probably the biggest one these days, obviously, is political divisions mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, people identifying with, in our case, in the United States, either Democrats or Republicans or, you know, some independents. But that that being such a huge part of people's ident identities these days, I think to read this chapter and to talk about the kind of countercultural move it is to love one another without, you know, with patience, with kindness without envy or without boasting, without being arrogant, without, you know, playing gotcha, right? Uh, it's It really is just a, a hugely countercultural move. And it's really the church that is one of the only places or maybe the only place the only. where those divisions can be overcome, where people who, mm -hmm. who may vote differently or, you know, support different uh, political figures 
are able to still love one another. I mean, that that's just so important these days, especially in this election year, to talk about the call to Christians to love one another. I really like the idea of backing up, at least for yourself, into chapter 12, because uh, Paul says, not everybody has every gift. I think that, so in, or, in order to have every gift, I need to be a part of a community where others have other gifts than mine. Otherwise, I only have my gifts, and they're not that many. But then he says, there are the greater gifts. And my interpretation of this, and it's an interpretive move because Paul doesn't say it explicitly, is that the greater gifts are faith, hope, and love. And those three gifts are available to everyone. And Paul says they're the only gifts that are going to last into uh, heaven, the new kingdom. All the other gifts won't be necessary anymore. So then Paul gets to 1 Corinthians 13, and he talks about some of the gifts. He just said, do all speak in tongues? No. So if I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, that is, if I speak in tongues, but don't have love, one of the greater gifts, I'm a noisy gong. I think of the little monkey wind-up toy that has the little <laughs> gongs, right? Yeah. That's all I am. Yeah. And then do all have prophetic powers? If I have prophetic powers, do all have understanding or understand all mysteries? If I have all faith even, but do not have love, I'm nothing. And Paul goes on. And so finally, it's love above all, but faith and hope too, right? That are the permanent gifts. And... um what an incredibly spiritually immature thing it is to fight over whose gift is more important than the others. But then again, I'm part of a seminary faculty. <laughs> and uh, I think the Bible division thinks our stuff's most important, right, Catherine? We know that. Yeah. And know. Uh, the, the theologians think their, their ideas are most important. The leadership people like Joy think, y'all can have your ideas, but it's people can actually do things with them that matter. Well, and it's so just because the only reason that you <laughs> exist is so that we can send folks out to be leaders. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, right? But so I've been a part of a community that fights over whose turf is more important. And it's that we actually care about our turf, but then we start caring about our subject matter more than we care about loving the actual human beings. And so to point it back to that, I got one more point about this text. And that is, um, you're t you talked. You guys both talked earlier about love as a saccharine emotion. I think Americans do think that love is an emotion, not a set of verbs. Mm -hmm. That what does it mean to love? Well, um, if you make a promise, keep it. If you make a commitment, be there. Be on time at the start of the meeting. Pay attention. Uh oh, that's hard for me. Um, you know, um, when someone is with you, be present with them. Don't be distracted. You know. It's, it's a set of things, and it, at the entry-level keeping of those things is actually rather simple. Mm -hmm. um, musically, how would you set this? Uh, I, I have sung at weddings back when I was younger and my voice was better, and there's a musical set in this I've sung at weddings, which is saccharine and syrupy. It's, you know, the mm -hmm. old, it's, uh, I think it's to the water is wide. Yeah, da, 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 da. Da, da, right. It's uh, that's not at all what this should sound like. This is Paul. This is a Paul being angry and passionate. This is this is some heavy metal um, uh, rage. This is Paul's rage music. Yeah. In in the idea. Um, and I love that you you pulled out all of, you know, those those ideological differences that we have. But if we remember from uh, a couple of weeks back when we were talking about just what ancient Corinth was, the di differences of a caste and class system mm -hmm. that the Roman and Greek culture had um, had was the mindset of these people. Um, that's the mindset that we have today, whether as you defined it, Catherine, it's national or if it's uh, within our professions, um, or if it's, you know, what, um, uh, 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 see, I'm not sportsy enough to go immediately to, you know, what is your bracket? That's what I'm looking for. What is your bracket? <laughs> <laughs> like? But the, re the reality is, is that everything in our culture teaches us to divide. And ancient Corinth was very different. And yet 
what they saw, this is the action you were talking about, Catherine, what they saw was those divisions erased. And what Paul is um, uh, tuning up his metal music for uh, is to say, people aren't seeing that in us right now. And that's what they should see. They shouldn't hear us waxing on eloquently. They shouldn't hear us bragging about what we uh, know. They should see what has always caused the church to grow. They should see the dismantling of a cultural caste and class system where at the foot of the cross, sharing this hope in the resurrected Jesus and keeping faith that God is real, we form a community that practices hospitality. I think about, and I, I should know which early church father said this, but um, I, I'm, I, it's reminded, you reminded me of this. Uh, uh, one of them said, uh, you know, society looks at us very strangely, that is the Christian community, and they say something like, what an odd collection of people, and yet see how they love one another. Yes, that that's the witness. And I think, you know, thinking about sappy songs, I think about that old campfire song, they'll know we are Christians by our loves. By our love. Which may not be a bad one to use on this Sunday. I mean, it is a little sappy, but it but it but it's true, right? They'll know we are Christians by our love. That, that we should witness in all of our differences and all of our various identities and all of our variety uh, to the love that draws us together. And even when we don't feel it as an emotion, as we've already said, it's not primarily an emotion. It's love in action. It's being kind and patient. Uh, it's, you know, not being irritable or resentful, uh, rejoicing in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. I mean, what a beautiful testimony. And you know, I, I think the good news here is that we don't have to be the source of that love, right? We reflect God's love. We aren't. Love, right. We reflect God's agape love for us. And so the, the last part of the, of the chapter is really important, too. Uh, we know only in part. We prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. And then this especially. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Uh, and now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. We we know only in part, We we uh, and we rely on God's grace to give us the ability to love one another as Christ loves us.